definitely kind of tugs at your heartstrings. And so we do just want to, you know, thank you know, all of our service people, but, you know, the, especially on Memorial Day and Memorial Day weekend, those that gave their lives and for our country and to secure, to protect, to preserve those freedoms that we enjoy. And I was thinking about a little bit earlier today that there's a certain parallel there um, with, you know, these freedoms that they help protect for us here on this earth and then the sacrifice of himself that Christ made to secure our ultimate freedom, you know, eternal freedom from sin and death that, that he lays down his life and gives himself up f for us, for his people so that we can be free forever with him. And so, um, I, there's a certain, you know, reminder, at least for me in with the sacrifice soldiers make, and then with the ultimate sacrifice that Christ made of himself. And so, you know, we're going to, Dan's going to preach for us a little bit later and the message is going to focus on this. You were once darkness, but you're now light in the Lord. And so this, we were enslaved to, to evil and darkness, and we've been delivered to walk in the light of truth in, in the light of, of Christ. And so, uh, we just, you know, we want to celebrate that as we sing and, and then as we worship through, through preaching. So if Daniel, if you guys will come up and maybe we can uh, say a prayer as I'll say a prayer, lead us in praying as you guys come up. So, um, Lord, uh, we, uh, we acknowledge you, God, as the sovereign king and ruler uh, over all creation, over all the world, and over our nation. And um, we're grateful for the nation in which we live, in which you've placed us. Um, grateful, you know, I'm grateful today here in the announcement from President Trump about that places of worship are essential, and we we hold to that value and that conviction. Worship is what we were created for and you were the one we we're created for. So um, thank you for our soldiers, both living and those um, that have given their lives, Lord. And thank you most of all, God, for, uh, for your son who gave himself on the cross, who died and who rose again, Lord, to set us free from sin, to make us yours, God. So we just want to honor you and give you praise here together as we sing and as we listen to your word in Jesus name. Amen. Good afternoon for those of you who are watching at church time or a good evening or good morning. If you're watching in the morning, wherever you are, um, whenever you are time wise, uh, hello. Uh, let's go ahead and stand, and uh, we'll uh, join our voices together and sing. And if you're uh, sitting on your couch, let me hear you as well. <laughs>
shout your name alone. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There is no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you. seated.
death is just a memory and tears are no more. We'll enter in as the wedding bells ring. Your bride will come together and we'll sing your beautiful It's a good reminder to be consistently thinking about God and how beautiful he is. His plan from creation to Christ dying on the cross to us now, and then the future plan of us being able to be with him in glory. There's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, It's hard to think about everything that's going on and still keep our mind focused on God is in control because we have so many things that are um, influencing us. Elections, uh, ballots were in this last week and what is that going to do to our lives? All those different decisions, how is that going to influence us? And I was thinking about uh, the songs, and we really need to focus on God because he's in control of everything. And I was thinking about our citizenship with voting and our citizenship here in the U.S. Well, ultimately, it's not here. Ultimately, it really doesn't matter what happens here. God's in control, and... What matters is our faith in him and us following him. And so this last song we're going to sing, it's a little bit more upbeat. So if you guys want to stand, you are more than welcome to. But I'm looking forward to that day, some morning, some afternoon, some evening. I don't know when, but when we get to fly away and meet God. Um, So go ahead and sing with us, and hopefully this will... uh, lift our spirits even amongst this uh, Memorial Day weekend and remembering.
may be seated. And I was really hoping this whole camera thing would be over by the time I got up to preach. But it's not, so here I am. Suppose I have to look at the camera tonight while I preach. Can I, can I look around? It won't confuse everybody at home? Okay, good. Well, it's springtime, and in eastern Oregon, springtime, I get to thinking about spring bear hunting. And so I going to start telling a little story about spring bears. And this one happens to be my first time. If you guys know where Imnaha is, it's kind of about northeast Oregon as you get. And my hunting partners, they were already there and at camp. And have you guys ever been late to something you're excited for like that? And you're, you're coming in and uh, just, you know, for me, it was dark and I know the guys are already there and man, I'm excited because I want to get there. So you might have a little bit of a lead foot when you're doing it. And I actually had never been up. I was looking for the pie plates to get to the trailhead where they were at. So I hadn't been in that country, but you get to Imnaha and you just start heading up the hill towards that point. And it's, it's steep and it's dark. And uh, I was flying and, you know, looking for my little pie plates to get there and made my turns and squealing up to camp and, uh, and finally met up with them there. I'm going to leave you right there in that story. So you guys are going to have to have that image in your mind of me in Hell's Canyon in the dark flying to get to bear camp at night. Now, if you would, you guys stand with me again. I know when I'm at home watching this, I'm oftentimes on the couch, and uh, this is good practice anyway. So if you guys would stand, I'm going to read the passages of Scripture that, you, that we're in today. We're in uh, Ephesians 5 now, and the verses that I'm going to be sharing are Ephesians 5, verses 7 through 14. It says, Therefore, do not become partners with them, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now if you would, just bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Thank you for your word that teaches us. I pray that your spirit now would uh, take over in a special way that it would be your voice, your heart, your mind that is shared tonight with us here. So I thank you for that, Lord. Look forward to where you take us. May your light shine on us. Amen. Thank you. You guys can all sit down now. So remember, I will get back to the whole point behind the story of spring bear hunting and flying up the road. But if you look at uh, verse 7 that we're in now, kind of piggybacks off of the the Debbie Downer sermon that we had to hear last week. So this will be a little more joyful because it's not quite so hammered down, but he's he's reminding us again. It says, therefore, ties us back to to all the that Brock was telling us about people that choose, they're living in... um, sin. They're just practicing things. They're, they're making that the way of life. It's, it's sin that is um, become a pattern for them. And in verse 7 here, he, 
you know, they're making a deliberate practice of evil. And he's reminding us, hey, Christian, people, we're not to partner with them in the ways that they're walking. And so as we, uh, he moves on into to verse 8, Paul, he says, he actually labels that. He calls that, he says, don't walk, they're walking in darkness. You were in darkness doing all that. He says, don't. Now, what are you? He says, now you are light. The first half of Ephesians that we've been going through has been telling us, the first few chapters tells us all about what God has done. He's, God's laid the foundation that it's him and him alone that has a plan, that he's working this out in your life. He's leading us, he's guiding us, and he's um, working through. Now as we get, especially in, in chapter 5 here, we're, we're getting down to walking in love. Um, Wayne was preaching on that. This is, this is how we live our lives as Christians. And Paul, he's, he's getting into that. He says, walk, at the end of that verse 8, he says, walk as children of light. So if you've, if you've been a Christian long, you'll hear, you've, you'll have heard that term, walk. Well, how's your walk going? Sometimes, sometimes we get to talking to each other, and how's your walk? Well, what we mean is this. Um, how, how are you, as a Christian, living your life? Um, how's your walk going? That's, that's where this comes from. Because Paul, he's telling us, walk as children of light. And he says, he goes on in verse 9 there, if you look at that, he says, the fruit of, li- of light. So he's talking about that it's good and right and true. We're, we all know that fruit, light produces fruit, right? We see that, we, we watch the fruit grow throughout the summer. In fact, right now we've been clouded in and I've already heard some people saying, yeah, we just need some of the farmers, like, we need some heat. We've getting a lot of rain. We just need some heat and get this stuff growing. And so that's, that light produces the fruit. It's, it's goodness and righteousness. And, and that's what Paul's reminding us, that now you're, you're not in darkness. You're in the light. To, you're going to need to produce fruit. As he, as he bounces back into uh, verse 11, this must be important because he says, again, don't partner with them but expose them. As you move on into into verse 12 there, he he actually labels this. He says, these things are so, I can't even say them, they're shameful, and I'm not even going to mention what they are. They're so horrendous, and they're shameful. And if you look at that, it says they're done in secret. So you get this idea that these things are these evil deeds, these wicked ways, they're, they're doing these things in darkness, in secret. And I think, uh, I think when we're all in those moments and we're alone and we're withdrawn and, and we, di- we think no one's watching, we tend to have that temptation that says, yeah, I, might, I might get away with this because no one's watching. You know, somehow we, we're able to push God out of our minds that way and, and uh, think that he doesn't see or hear what we're doing. And, and it's usually those times when we're withdrawn, we're alone, we're in the dark. Um, and so Paul's reminding us again, like these things, are, these things are secret and they're done in secret. So you need to expose them by the light. When he, in verse 13 and 14, when he says the light shines on you, if the light shines on something, it's like, just like when you're doing that stuff in secret and, you're, and you think you're getting away with it and then all of a sudden the light shines in on it, it's not secret anymore. It's been exposed. So in that same way, Paul's reminding us that that light, that you're a child of light, that's exposing. So you're to, you're to come back to those folks that you're, um, you once were. We all once were that way. We are to now be shining that light of Christ that's in us on those situations. And that's the contrast that you can start to see here is that it's, it's darkness and light and, and the light exposes those things that are done in the darkness. When he, Paul also says, he he says it, he, he says, it says, what do you think that it is? 
He's referencing the Word of God. He's, he's talking about, he's saying, awake, arise, wake up, you guys. It says, it's, it's been telling us, these Old Testament scriptures that Paul's been grounded and rooted in, he's saying, wake up, arise, see the light around you, and walk in it. I've woke my kids up before, Jersey. You're over there, look half asleep. When I wake you up in the morning, sometimes I say, it's time to rise and shine. <laughs> right? He's saying, wake up, shine, let your light shine. Expose those around you. And all of that imagery, that light and darkness, he comes to say, it's Christ who is the light. Christ is the light. And so as you, as you hear this, as you he- think of light, I want you to think of Christ being that light. That's what Paul says. So um, I'm mentioning Paul a lot here. He's, he's the author of Ephesians, and he's writing to the Ephesian um, believers at the time. And in their culture, they had some uh, pretty wicked practices. They would have some cultic uh, church services that would have prostitution and sexual activities. And I'm sure with all that, they had a lot of booze and alcohol and these things, all of these things that he's been telling us to not do. He's writing to the believers that are in the culture that this stuff is set in. And so Paul is now practicing what he's preaching by doing this. See, Paul was in darkness once too. In fact, he was in darkness and persecuting the Christians. And a lot of you know this, but it's, Paul had this conversion. In fact, he wasn't always called Paul. He was called Saul. And I'll just read you. It's, it, it's found in um, Acts chapter 9. It says, But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So, here's Paul, who's writing this letter to the Ephesian believers, who once was called Saul, persecuting the same believers he's writing to. He's on his way to Damascus, and a light shines around him so bright that he hits the deck and it's Christ talking to him with this light and it blinds him for days as Jesus is teaching him to now become the light. Again, in that, who is the light? It's Jesus. So Jesus has penetrated Paul, blinds him, and then sets him on this mission. So Paul is practicing what he's preaching. He knows that what Christ has done for him through this letting in of the light. And now he is, he is practicing that same thing. So I got to thinking about this with Paul and how he had this experience with the light that Shown so bright, God used that, changes his life. He's got this just burning sensation now to go back. And I mean, he's, he comes back to these believers and they're going, man, this guy was trying to kill us. We don't even know if we should trust him or not. And uh, now he's got this passion to preach Christ and Christ crucified and teach others about him. He's so passionate. He had that light fill him. And now that light is coming out. He's... He's going to these people. He's exposing them by that same light that's within him. He 
Just like Paul, we are to do that. When Christ has shined his cross, the light of his cross, when he shined into us and that salvation has come, and we know that, he's talking, he's addressing us as believers right now. We are to do that same thing. So, uh, you know, I'm a builder, and we're building a home for John and Marcia, and it's a, it's a wonderful home. And during this process, we were looking at the light coming in as we're building, and in my short-sightedness, I just thought about the light coming in and the way it, the way it exposed on the, on the woodwork, and it just filled that house when the sun was setting and these colors. And uh, John shared these photos with me, and, and I got to thinking, man, I never even dawned on me how beautiful the light shines out at night in the darkness. It's unreal. And so that image of Christ, the light, shining in and filling us, he shows me this, and it's like, that's it. When that, when that house, when this house is full of light, the light of Christ, it, when, we're, when we're in darkness, it's going to radiate out. It's going to shine, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to light up the path. It's going to expose those around us by the light. I'm going to read you a text here from... Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It's about the light. It says, You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You, Christians, are the light of the world. So when that light fills you, you're to let that light shine around you so that the world around you sees those good works and gives glory to God. So a lot of that has to do with if you see where I'm going with this, how we as Christians, based on that knowing what God has done, if we are filled with the light, that's talking about our walk. That's what we're to do. So I'm going to get back now to the, the bear hunting story. And here's, here's where the image in my mind is very clear. So after I was, I was bear hunting, drove up in the, in the dark, a couple days later, I had to leave early. I'd get there late and leave early. I wasn't even married yet, I don't think. And my, I don't have that. My wife working me too hard. But no. <laughs> so I leave in the daytime, done bear hunting, and I'm trucking down the hill. And I come around the corner, and you're up in the timber up there in that country. And you come down, and you come around the corner, and then pretty soon the timber's gone, and there's a steep canyon. And you're driving the road right on it. And I hit the brakes and instantly went, oh no, I was going way too fast last night in the dark up this road that didn't exist off to my right. <laughs> and I looked down there and in the, in the valley, there's some remains of an old vehicle down there. And so I got to thinking about that with this idea of the light. It was daylight. It exposed all of that around me. It was dangerous. I didn't know it. I was in a hurry to get to camp. I was flying up that road. But in the daylight, I could see that I had to drive different on this road that I was now on. What did I do? I slowed down. Now, that has, you know, an implication in our lives. Paul says, don't partner with them. You as Christians, you, I hope you have friends that are not Christians. Okay? I hope you're not partnered with them the way 
Paul is warning us not to partner with them. But he also says expose them. And you can't expose them if you're not with them. you got to have that light near them to expose them. And so just like that road that I'm coming down, I still have to get down that road. But the way I go down that road looks a whole lot different than it did when I was driving up in the dark. So, I have this picture up on the, on the screen. And I, I'd love to, I know we have these LED flashlights and things like that now. I, I, I would love to have this flashlight that shines out this cross as I go. Because as I'm, as I'm doing this and, and preparing this sermon, I, just, I think about that and it's got... It's got a lot of significance, and I think so. If somebody can invent that for me and get me one of these cross-shaped flashlights that I can walk around with on the ground, uh, it helps because as a believer, when you come to know the Lord, when this light shines in you, Paul's teaching us how to walk. He doesn't, he doesn't tell us exactly how to walk. He warns us. He tells us some things like Brock was saying, don't partner with them. Man, we got a prayer train going on here, don't we? It's pretty loud. People are praying hard. But when you're walking, if you look at that cross and you think about that path that's lit up by a cross, about the shape of the cross, if you're following that, you got, you got some ways to go there. It's not just a straight line. As believers, we've got we've to work out our salvation this way. We've got we to gotta learn how to expose people, but it's not easy. When we come, and I'm sure all of you guys have had Friends, you've, you've come to know the Lord. God's changing you from the inside. And you got this buddy. And you're like, man, kind of awkward around him now because I know what he's doing is not right. So, but I don't, you know, there's this awkward moment. And I think that's as believers. It, nobody's going to tell you exactly how to move through that other than God's given us that word that, hey, this light is now going to guide you. It's going to expose those things. But he says, you got to expose them. You can't just withdraw. You can't go hide your light. You can't just exit out of this, right? So as we walk, especially here, as we come to know the Lord, we know this light that has shined in us. We're walking in love is the, is the point that Paul's making here. we got to expose those dark ways. we got to be careful. We don't know exactly which way to go. We don't want to slip back in. We don't want to partner with them. But... We are going to walk as children of the light. So, I hope as we listen to this song that I'm closing with, um, when you look at these, these verses, just real simple, the, only, the things I want you to take away is that we are children of the light. We're, we're to walk as children. Um, yeah, there's probably a whole, a whole other sermon in just that right there, but the point is, is that we have a father and, and we're to follow him. And if you have kids, I don't even have to say any more about that. Um, and so just walk as children of the light and understand that Christ is the light. If you have, if you have those two things on your mind from this night, then... I think that's a success. So, uh, th- the reason why I skipped that over is because until we understand that Jesus and his cross and his light is what pleases the Lord, then we won't be able to do that without him. So as we think about the light, it's Christ, that light that shines in us. Because of that, we will be able to please our Lord. We are his children. By his son, we'll walk as Christians and we'll be able to love and please our heavenly father. So walk as children in the light. You guys are child children of light. I know some of you are a little older and going, man, I'd like that thought about being a child again, right? Well, we are. 
and it's because of Christ. So if you would, pray with me. Lord, thank you for um, this opportunity. I know that uh, there's always something else that could be said about your goodness, your glory, and your word here. Um, Lord, my heart's desire, my prayer tonight that is that, uh, God, we would understand that you are the light, that it's Christ in us that shines around us, that you are pleased by that. And God, as we walk together as Christians, uh, I do pray we would spur each other on to love and good works. So yeah, if we can just take away one thing, Lord, tonight, knowing that you are the light and your light shines in us. I, I would praise you for that, Lord. So thank you. Love you. and Amen. Well, thank you guys for coming.